Welcome back everybody. Yes, Unit 6, Culture and Commerce. And today we're going to discuss listening to. If you can open your textbook, we're gonna go to listening to page 136. Yes. Town hall meeting in Cape Cod. Read the information about Cape Cod. Notice the bold face words. What can you conclude about this tourist destination, Cape Cod? Okay, Massachusetts, United States, well, all the states you see here, uh, Massachusetts states, and in here, um, zoomed in. We've got Boston, Cape Cod Bay, yeah, over here, and it's funny, it almost looks like an arm. <laughs> okay, Cape Cod is one of New England's most popular tourist attractions. Tourism has developed quickly and now the area is visited by more than 5 million tourists each year. During the summer season from June to September, tourists come to relax at the beach, shop in the small towns and eat fresh seafood. During the rest of the year, the population drops to about 200,000 and Cape Cod becomes a small community again. Many summer businesses such as restaurants and souvenir shops close for the winter because they cannot afford to pay their workers' salaries once the tourists leave. Okay, we're going to look at the bold face words developed, season, community, afford and salaries. Match the, base, the bold face words with the definitions. Number one is done for us. Uh, develop is E to grow into something bigger. What are number two, three, four, and five? You can pause your video to answer. Go ahead. Great. That brings us to the comprehension of the listening. You're going to listen and take notes. You're going to listen to a town hall meeting. The mayor, which is a town leader, is leading the meeting and the townspeople are listening and expressing their opinions. Complete each statement, circle the correct answer. So this is really going back to you understanding the listening. It's questions one until five. Before you do that, I want you to annotate on the keywords in the sentences and the answer choices. Go ahead. Very good, we're going to start the audio. Please take notes and you can answer straight away and then afterwards check your answers. Follow your keywords. Okay, we're here today to talk about tourism in our community. Let's start with the first item on our agenda identifying some of the problems caused by the increasing number of tourists we get every year. Well, for one, the traffic is just terrible in the summer. In winter, it takes me about 15 minutes to drive into town. But in the summer, it can be 45 minutes or more. It's ridiculous. Yeah, right. Yeah. I agree. Traffic gets bad, but in my mind, the biggest problem is housing. Cost of Buying or renting a home here is way too high. Yeah, it's just yeah. too expensive on a regular salary. Too many homes are sold as vacation homes for rich people. And that leaves nothing for the working people who live here. I mean, I own a seafood restaurant, okay? And I've got a waitress who's living in her car right now because she can't afford any other place to live. We've got to do something about that. Can I say something? Sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I know it's difficult to have all these tourists around during the summer, but I, for one, am very happy to have them. I run a souvenir shop, and I do about 80% of my business for the year in the summer, and I'm not the only one. Tourists are the lifeblood of our community. Without them, I wouldn't be able to make a living. We've got to keep them coming. Of course, we need the tourists. No one's denying that. But I'm a business owner, too. And one problem I see is that we depend on the weather so much. When it rains, tourists don't come, huh? This 
season has been really difficult for my business because of that. With all this rain last month, I lost a lot of money because people weren't coming in the door. I'd like to see us develop where we don't depend on the weather so much. Okay, before we move on, I'd like to address one of the comments made. Okay, check your answers. Very good. That brings us to the listening skill. Listening for opinions, hearing the opinions of other people. Listen to an excerpt from the town hall meeting. What words does the speaker use to show that he is going to state an opinion? Let's listen. I agree. Traffic gets bad, but in my mind, the biggest problem is housing. The cost of buying or renting a home here is way too high. It is useful to know when a person is going to state an opinion. Speaker use, speakers use many different expressions to introduce opinions. For example, in my opinion, I think that, I believe, all initiates that an opinion is coming up. Okay, let's listen to uh, the example and notice the signal words. I agree. Traffic gets bad, but in my mind, the biggest problem is housing. Yeah, this person says, in my mind, I agree, traffic gets bad, but in my mind, the biggest problem is housing. So the speaker uses the phrase, in my mind, to signal that he's going to state his opinion. His opinion is that housing is the biggest problem caused by tourists. So either you say, in my opinion, I think that, I believe, or in my mind. Listen to the excerpt, complete each statement, and write the expression that signals an opinion, and write the speaker's opinion. We've got three. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I know it's difficult to have all these tourists around during the summer, but I, for one, am very happy to have them. Okay, so we have to complete it. Okay, I know it's difficult to have all these tourists around during the summer, but I, for one, am happy to have them. So complete the sentence. And what is the speaker's opinion? Please write that down. Great. Ex excerpt two. But I'm a business owner too. And one problem I see is that we depend on the weather so much. What is the speaker's opinion? Three. I'd like to see us develop where we don't depend on the weather so much. Right. Okay, take a bit of time to complete these sentences and to write the speaker's opinions. Go ahead. That brings us actually to the last part, which is connecting the listenings. Um, when we connect the listenings, we're always looking at the first one from listening one and the second one from listening two. We organize it by looking at facts from both and then combining them, correlating them, and seeing what conclusion we can get out of it. Uh, listen to the listenings one and two again, then complete the chart with details about the effects of tourism. So, listening one, put down tribe, the positive effects of tourism and the negative effects of tourism. And then the listening two just now is Cape Cod residents, also positive and negative effects of tourism. I'm going to let you listen to both again, and I want you to fill out this chart. So you got to take notes, okay? So, what is your focus of listening? Positive effects and negative effects of tourism very good let's go critics call it a human zoo tour companies consider it a tourist attraction whichever the case the long-necked women of padang have become an important source of money for several small villages on the border of thailand and myanmar reporter mike danforth has this report welcome to nice soy Please buy your ticket here. Each year, around 10,000 tourists visit three small villages along the Thai-Myanmar border to see the famous long-necked women. The attraction is a tradition that requires women to stretch their necks by wearing brass coils. Originally from the Pa Dong tribe, the women and their families came from Myanmar to Thailand in the 1980s to escape poverty and war. Their new lives are very different from their lives as farmers in Myanmar. Now they make a living talking with tourists, posing for pictures, and selling handmade souvenirs. 
When a Pawdong girl turns five, a thick coil of brass is wrapped around her neck. Throughout her life, more coils are added until her neck carries up to 25 brass rings weighing up to 22 pounds. The coils push up her chin and press down her collarbone, making her neck longer. Pape, a young woman with 20 neck rings, describes her early years of neck stretching. At first, it was painful, but now it's okay. Now sleeping, eating, working, everything is okay. But I cannot take it off, so this is my life. It truly is her life. Pape's neck is now so weak that if she takes off the coils, her head will fall forward and she'll stop breathing. Despite the discomfort, Padong women in Thailand continue to wear the coils, even though the tradition has almost disappeared in Myanmar. Why? Because there's money in it. Ma Nong, a graceful woman with 24 neck rings, explains. In Myanmar, I worked hard growing food. Now I sit and tourists take pictures. In one month, I get 70 to 80 dollars. It's easy and it's good money for my family. Sometimes I'm tired of tourists always looking, but it's good money. Each year, as the long-necked women have become more and more popular, the controversy about them has increased. In an outdoor restaurant near Nysoy, tourists discuss whether or not to visit the village. Sandra, a Canadian woman, feels that it's fine to visit. I don't really see a problem. I mean, this is their tradition. And so, if I go, it's like I'm helping them to preserve it. Spending my money is also helping them. You know, they make a living from tourism, so they need us. Frederick, from Germany, feels differently. Actually, I don't see that we are preserving tradition at all. This tradition has died in Myanmar already. These women are just hurting their bodies to entertain us. It's, it's like paying to go see animals in a zoo. It's degrading. For now, the future of the long-necked women is easy to predict. As long as there are tourists who will pay to see them, they will continue to wrap their daughters' necks. The controversy continues, with one side seeing the villages as examples of how tourism can save dying traditions, and others criticizing it as harmful and degrading to the Padong women. Okay, we're here today to talk about tourism in our community. Let's start with the first item on our agenda identifying some of the problems caused by the increasing number of tourists we get every year. Well, for one, the traffic is just terrible in the summer. In winter, it takes me about 15 minutes to drive into town. But in the summer, it can be 45 minutes or more. It's ridiculous. Yeah, right. Yeah. I agree. Traffic gets bad, but in my mind, the biggest problem is housing. Cost of Buying or renting a home here is way too high. Yeah, yeah it's right. just yeah. too expensive on a regular salary. Too many homes are sold as vacation homes for rich people. And that leaves nothing for the working people who live here. I mean, I own a seafood restaurant, okay? And I've got a waitress who's living in her car right now because she can't afford any other place to live. We've got to do something about that. Can I say something? Sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I know it's difficult to have all these tourists around during the summer, but I, for one, am very happy to have them. I run a souvenir shop, and I do about 80% of my business for the year in the summer, and I'm not the only one. Tourists are the lifeblood of our community. Without them, I wouldn't be able to make a living. We've got to keep them coming. Of course, we need the tourists. No one's denying that. But I'm a business owner, too. And one problem I see is that we depend on the weather so much. When it rains, tourists don't come, huh? This season has been really difficult for my business because of that. With all this rain last month, I lost a lot of money because people weren't coming in the door. I'd like to see us develop where we don't depend on the weather so much. Okay, before we move on, I'd like to address one of the comments made here. 
Okay, that were the audio sections of listening one and two, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of time right now to fill out this chart. Okay, go ahead. Um, draw a circle around the effect that is similar in both communities. What do you see is the same in listening one and in listening two? Okay, last part, synthesizing, where we group things together, we link it and we make a conclusion. Does tourism help or hurt people in tourist communities? That's the question. Okay, like, does it help? Does it, or does it hurt people? And we can think about Bali. You know, Bali is a place of tourism. Does it help or hurt the people here in Bali, as in communities? Okay, I want you to think about that. And I want you to come up with an opinion. And when we meet next in our Zoom meeting, you are going to express that opinion to me. So make sure that you get to write down what you think about that here on the empty margins in your book down below, left or right. Write down your opinion so next time we meet, we can discuss that. Does tourism hurt or help local communities? That is the question. Okay, looking back at what we did today, we, we reviewed some of the vocab. We had new vocabulary, develop, season, community, afford, and salary. We looked at the definition and make a connection between the word and the definition. We did a comprehension, listening for comprehension. So you were listening for keywords. You had to underline the keywords first and then listen, targeted listening by listening for the keywords. Then we talked about the listening skill, listening for opinions that you can recognize when someone is stating an opinion by the way they introduce it. By, for example, using in my opinion, I think that I believe or in my mind, which is a signal that somebody's going to give their opinion. And last is connecting the listening sections one and two, seeing the positive and negative effects of tourism in both listening sections and seeing where they are similar between listening one and listening two. Do not forget to come up with your own opinion about the topic, does tourism help or hurt people in tourist communities? For example, Bali, and I want you to use PEEL, P-E-E-L, your P stands for point your opinion, explain it with reasons, give an example and link it back. Very good. Thank you very much for today. You're amazing. I'm going to see you soon. God bless you. Bye.